the five most common signs of anxious attachment is what we're going to unpack in this video. And the last one that I'm going to mention is probably the most important. And if you can reframe the last one I talk about, I think you'll have a lot more success in your relationships, okay? Particularly your intimate relationships like a marriage, for example. Okay, uh, sign number one that you might have an anxious attachment style is the most obvious one. When they, your partner, ex-partner, whoever, uh, usually it's a partner though, because um, this is where it gets triggered. When they pull away, get quiet, withdraw, retreat, shut down, you are triggered into anxiety. <clears throat> Fear comes up. That's the most common sign that you have an anxious attachment style. And usually this happens in conflict when there's stress between the two of you. The other person under stress call them an avoidant attachment style, they retreat, you get scared, right? That's the most common obvious sign that you have an anxious attachment style, all right? Uh, I will say a little bit more about attachment in this video and future videos, like what is attachment? And we need to unpack that at some point. But you're probably familiar enough with attachment styles now, anxious, avoidant. Those are the two common ones you hear about that I think you're here because you wanna just learn about your style, okay? Uh, second one is wanting from the anxiety, you now want to talk about the issue, whatever the st stressor was, whatever the challenge was, whatever the conflict was, you wanna talk. And the other person is like, neener, neener. Like, the more you talk, the more they want to retreat. And you're usually speaking from a place of anxiety, which doesn't really help you as a couple calm down and get connected again, which is what you want, right? All right, uh, third issue is a deeper one, which is the fear that the other person will leave. Some people call this a fear of abandonment or a fear of rejection, is you get enough slow text messages back or no text message back, you worry that the other person has left, is no longer interested, doesn't like you, doesn't love you, doesn't care about you, and you are now on your own, right? This is a deeper fear that many of us with anxious attachment styles have. And this stems from a childhood experience with a parent who was there some of the time and they're not some of the time. And then when they left, it created a lot of anxiety in you, right? Left for work or didn't talk to you for days or gave you the silent treatment. I did a video on that, by the way, you'll wanna check out. Um, that can be really scary for a child. And we have underdeveloped parts in us. And sometimes we feel like we're three years old or 10 years old or 15 years old when our partner retreats and we feel like scared, like we're gonna be left alone, All right? This is, uh, this is very real memory in the body. It doesn't mean it's really happening in real time in, in life. And it might mean that, yeah, your partner is not interested in you anymore. Sometimes it does mean that. But be careful when they retreat that you make meaning out of their retreat and you make it about you and you're like, they don't love me anymore. They wanna leave me. I'm abandoned and I'm alone. All right, not always true, just watch that storyline, okay? Number four, you experience anger if the cycle continues, where they withdraw and don't talk about it. During conflict, they retreat, they just wanna watch movies or they don't wanna talk about it, and days later, you guys are fine again. Well, enough of those unrepaired conflicts or stressful moments, you start to resent them and you get so mad that they just won't come back and use their words and talk to you about it. Understandable, but your anger is a sign that you have more work to do on developing your capacity to be with yourself while they retreat. And I do a lot of videos on how to, how to be with ourselves 
during conflict, for example, or stressful moments in our most important relationships. So watch the anger. And again, it's valid because you're like, God, you all, just talk to me or just come back. Like, what is your problem? Like, it's very understandable, but it's not going to help you get what you want, right? So you two as a couple have more work to do on your communication and getting on the same page and getting some agreements in place about what to do in these moments. All right, and the fifth, probably the most important one here that people, and I say that because the others are super important, but the fifth sign that you have an anxious attachment style is that you judge yourself as too needy, too clingy, too emotional, too sensitive, and too much. All right, and I've done videos on this as well. Please go watch those. Um, it's uncomfortable, I hear you. Uh, and often you'll find a partner who judges you directly or indirectly as too sensitive, too much, too emotional, too whatever, all right? Uh, I think the video I did was never say this to a woman. So, because uh, often women find themselves judged for their sensitivity, their clinginess, et cetera. But all men and women and all genders uh, experience feeling like they're too much sometimes. So that's a classic sign that you have an anxious attachment style because as a child, when parents would retreat, you, you made it about you. Well, I'm too whatever, dot, 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 or I'm not enough, dot, dot, dot. That's what children do. And you're still in that old tape making it about you that they've retreated. Even if they say you're too sensitive or too much, it's bullshit. You're not. You're as sensitive as you are. You're as needy as them. We're all needy. Avoidant types are some of the neediest. They just, their neediness has gone underground and it's more of a shadow side of theirs, but they're, they need relationship as much as you need relationship. They just don't like to admit it and they don't see it. All right. Um, and you have valid needs. All right. And I have done videos on needs and I'll do more videos on needs as well. Okay. So those are the five, five signs around your attachment style. Um, one more quick tip here is you and your partner can talk about your attachment styles in a non-pathological, non-blamey way so that you can understand yourselves better. For example, the most common relationship dynamic under stress below like the fight about the laundry or the bills or the lack of sex or the kids, that's like a could be a surface fight. Underneath that, there's another layer of stress, which is when we get challenged, you withdraw and I want to talk about it. And then I chase you down and you withdraw more. I call it the seek avoid dynamic. And it's just an attachment issue. That's all it is. It's under stress. Maybe for the rest of your life, you might consider, I have this anxious attachment style. My partner has an avoidant attachment style. We're normal. You're normal. Don't make yourselves wrong. All right. And if you can work as a team, given how your nervous systems are wired, that under stress, one retreats and one pursues, you got to talk about that. You got to talk, how are we going to navigate this? All right. Please have those conversations. Subscribe to my channel and we'll see you in the next video. Oh, and leave a comment if you will, if this was helpful.